Hey everyone, Kabana Money four five six here recording another video. So yeah, today we've got some news, and uh, actually tonight, yeah, this is one of my, actually one of my first videos, like for a long time that I've done a news update late at night. So anyway, um, E.G. Anuma has confirmed some new details about um, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, um, a lot about storyline and etc. So. Um, about the story, turns out that this game is um, supposed to be about the creation of the Master Sword and um, the way it was born, so to speak. So these are actually his words. This time around, it's more centered on the creation of the Master Sword, the way it was born, so to speak, and that Link kind of forges it along the way. It's more centered on that, which is a different pattern than we have had in a lot of ways. And then um, Anuma also confirms that um, Zelda isn't a princess in the game, stating that she and Link have a great relationship. And that regarding her new look, as you've seen before, she's a blonde now, and uh, just kind of has that, I don't know, kind of like country girl look, I guess you'd say. I'm not saying that's bad or anything whatsoever. I mean, all the ladies from the South are very pretty. <laughs> I'm just messing around. But anyway, um, yeah, so she just kind of, uh, she doesn't look as royal, but because of that, he stated that one of the things that I said before was that she's supposed to be Link's childhood friend, so we tried to give her a design that made her feel sort of relatable and have that warmth to her. And to be honest, it actually does, I think Zelda looks quite pretty. I don't see why she's getting a lot of hate, so all you haters, you can just go to heck, whatever. I mean, because seriously, it's not like she's supposed to look like complete royalty. I mean, she's supposed to look like someone who's Link's childhood friend. And it's not like she's ugly or anything. I can tell you for sure she's a lot prettier than when she, how she looked as a child in Ocarina of Time 3D. And also, um, turns out that Numa has confirmed that the new instrument in Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword will be the harp. And that um, this time, he says here, this time around, the harp comes into Link's hands during the course of the game and it is used to help the player find something important. You actually need to play the harp to use it, so to speak. The design is the same as the harp that Sheik has in Ocarina of Time. So this probably kind of leads a bit, like I said, um, before Skyward Sword is before Ocarina of Time. So you're probably going to see a few tie-ins, like as he just kind of basically gave a hint right here. That the shape has the design of the harp is kind of similar to um, Sheik's harp in Ocarina of Time. So what I'm thinking is Sheik probably got this harp from Link, like the Link in previous time, like uh, in Skyward Sword. So this is actually pretty interesting. I'm kind of giving you some probably spoilers. I don't know. Also, um, he confirms that the harp is sort of the central instrument. Wait a second. Yeah, the harp is the central instrument that you'll see this time. With a lot of previous Zelda games, this has been about inputting specific notes to compose things. Given the nature of what a harp is and the fact that it's an instrument that one strums, this time we're using the Wii Motion Plus to really make it based on the rhythm of strumming to get across the music element. That's really pretty cool. I'm kind of excited to see what they plan to do with that. Um, might not be amazing or very intuitive, I don't know, but we shall see. They'll probably do deal with something like moving a nunchuck over the Wii Remote. And then also he talks about Lord Gearham, which is um, Skyward Sword's main antagonist. Anuma explains that he was created in contrast to Ganon, a character that is very masculine and powerful. But this guy, is, as he says, is someone who's a little bit mysterious and kind of makes people think, well, I don't really know what to make of this somewhat terrifying character. That was sort of my goal in making a character like Gearham. And that's basically why I did that. And um, also, he confirms the timeline that it's before Ocarina of Time. And that Ganon won't make an appearance since the story doesn't deal directly with the Triforce. So Ganon, not going to be in the game whatsoever. Finally, Anuma was asked about the birds seen in the Flying Grace demo at E3. And he explained that that's Link's way of traveling. Kind of like the ship in... Um, uh, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker and um, kind of like Epona and Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess and all those games. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's pretty awesome news. Then also, um, got some news on the Nintendo 3DS. Uh, CyberConnect 2 actually wants to develop Mega Man Legends 3. And, uh, um, Hiroshi Matsuyama, I believe, CEO of Cyber 2 Connect, Cyber Connect 2 has said, um, when he was asked what game 
he wanted to work on next, he said it would be Mega Man Legends 3. Now, he really likes the series in that he's currently working on Asura's Wrath for Capcom at the moment, so there's kind of like this relationship between the companies. And that uh, the cancellation of Mega Man Legends has kind of made Capcom really bend in a lot of trouble lately, I guess. So if they started the project again, that would be... Um, uh, what is it? That would be pretty good if um, that company could actually develop, like, work on that game. That'd be pretty cool. Also, uh, Tetris 3D S. We have a photo right here. That's on Nintendo 3DS blog, so check it out. Um, looks pretty cool, actually. Pretty interesting. It looks like you're probably gonna have to swivel around Tetris, like, on this little cylinder, and it'll probably take effect of, like, take advantage of the 3D effects. So it's kind of unique, different from other games. Also, uh, Patchster has given us some info on Wii, Wii U and 3DS and that he believes that there's some potential, Michael Patchster, um, industry analyst, has said that he believes there's some potential that the 3DS will rebound and he states here he expects the company is currently well off targets for 11 million Nintendo DS, 16 million Nintendo 3DS, and 13 million Wii systems in the fiscal year, but that, um, he thinks that the 3DS could actually rebound and make a comeback because of um, cool apps and like the uh, strong software releases coming out this fall. So uh, like Mario Kart and Kid Icarus and all these other games. And he believes that Netflix is one key feature that will really help out the 3DS, especially if 3D streaming comes to Netflix on the 3DS. Also, he talks about the sweet spot price for the... Um, for the Wii U, as you've probably heard before, and that, uh, like, he's talked about sweet spots for gaming systems and stuff like that, and he said that, um, $250 would be probably the sweet spot for the system that would surprise him a lot. The Wii U costs more than $400, because, um, pricing, as he says here, pricing really depends upon the weather, where the other console bundles, PS3 with Move and 360 with Connect, are priced at the time the Wii U launches because people who don't yet have a console are likely going to choose among the three offerings and the biggest driver with the purchase decision is usually price which I can totally agree with because um I mean my parents usually wouldn't give me a 360 or PS3 because those were super expensive at the time but they got me a Wii so because it was like the cheapest out of them all and uh yeah so that's basically it for price wise and then also, um, as you've heard before about the rumors on GameCube downloads, it turns out that Nintendo has not denied it. And they're saying, they actually said this, to clarify the capabilities of the Wii U system is correctly stated. Wii U will not play Nintendo GameCube discs. However, Nintendo has not made any announcements regarding downloadable content. So they're not denying it, but they're not saying that... That they're not they're not saying they will do it, but they're not denying it. So there is quite a lot of hope. Probably, um, I don't know, 75% chance that it's probably going to come to the Wii U, or that there are going to be a few Nintendo GameCube downloads, like the really good games. Also, um, it turns out that uh, Wii U is like they have no plans to support two controllers on the Wii U. So that kind of stinks, but you know, it's all good. I mean. They'll probably make announcements later, like if prices go down on materials and all that jazz, but anyway, yeah. So anyway, that's basically it. Just another late night news update. So anyway, thanks for watching. Kabana 456 signing out. Peace, everyone. Please remember to comment, like, subscribe. Stay tuned for more 3 as vids, walkthroughs, and updates. And I don't really have too much else to say, so probably won't have an update tomorrow since I'm kind of doing this late at night. But, uh... Might have one, I don't know, you never know what happens. Might have some Sonic Generations info, you never know. So anyway, uh, yeah, see ya, have a good day.